Hello Packers fans, welcome into PackersNews.com. I'm Cassidy Hill, joined by Pete Doherty here from Soldier Field where Pete, the Jordan Love era has officially opened and it did so with a 38-20 win and what you can tell is very much clearly the Windy City here in Chicago. Week 1 win, so Packers not only moved to 1-0 but they moved to 1-0 in the division starting there. Um, let's just kind of start your overall perspective of this game how important was this game just to kind of establish what this Packers team could be under Jordan Love and in the NFC North you know I I kind of came in uh, you know you don't put too much one way or the other into these games I mean just a couple years ago the Packers went down to Jacksonville and got blown off the field by the Saints uh, and you know they went on to win the division have the top seed in the conference um, so if, if Love had been bad it wouldn't have been the end of the world, but uh, he was just, he was solid. He wasn't great. He missed some throws, right. took a bad sack. Uh, you know, there were, there were some, you know, he made his share of mistakes, but he did not turn the ball over, which is huge. Mm -hmm. He obviously outplayed Justin Fields by a lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're the Packers, you got to be feeling that, you know, pretty good about him as opposed to the Bears and how things are with uh, with Fields. So just a, just a solid, uh, you know, pretty decent performance and the Packers played a good overall game. Jordan Love's final stats were 15 of 27. This is just through the air. This is not even including what he did on the ground. 15 of 27, 245 yards, three touchdowns, and 123.2 passer rating. As far as what he did on the ground, he said that he told his agent this morning, I'm ready to run somebody over. And his agent told him, please slide. And he said, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, and, uh, you know, but I get what he was thinking because when he ran, well, I think at least one and a couple of them might have been on third downs and mm -hmm. you know he's trying to get the first down I, I mean you got to be careful there because you can't be taking too many shots but I get what he was doing and you know for a young guy like him in his in his first real you know first start where he's the guy to do that not the worst thing to you know your teammates see that you're you're laying your body on the line out there like that you know as weeks go on less of that because you can't get the guy hurt but uh, I get what he was thinking and um, you know he's he's obviously a lot better runner than Aaron Rodgers was the last couple of years I would say that he's comparable to how Rodgers was early in Rodgers career it's not a bad place to be if you're a young quarterback. You mentioned third down. One other stat real quick, and this may have actually ended up being different because I came down to the locker room with about four minutes left in the game. But at that point, Love on just third and fourth downs was 8 of 10 for 141 yards, two touchdowns, and five first downs. It's pretty impressive on those money downs and uh, a big day from the quarterback when they needed it to kick things off. Let's actually hear from both Matt LaFleur and Jordan Love on what they thought of the quarterback's day. All in all, I couldn't be more proud for, of, of just his performance, his poise. There's a, there's a big-time belief in that locker room for Jordan Love. And I think uh, the guys, they're going to rally around him. They're excited for him. They, they love him. They respect him. He comes to work every day. Great attitude, great energy. Um, and I, I think you saw that today. Just being in the locker room with the guys, they're awesome, man. I was actually giving a game ball today, um, and those guys were just were going crazy in there. So it's an awesome feeling for me. Um, but I mean, we got a great team. Uh, I love those guys. Um, uh, yeah, it, it feels great to have everybody behind you for sure. You have to be resilient, and you can't allow one play to affect the next play. And we always talk about having a one-play mindset, and I think he's, he's a resilient guy. I was really – proud of his effort is just his composure his competitiveness although I don't want him uh, taking a lot of shots when he's running the football um, you know the the one scramble allowed us to go for it on fourth down yeah no I mean I'm a competitor I told my agent before the game that I was gonna try and run somebody over uh, he told me not to do that he told me to slide so uh but you never know um, a couple of those runs were third down runs and you know you're just trying to get that first down um trying to find a way, um, but sliding's always an option. Uh, but when it's when it's close like that, I'm a, I'm a competitor. I'm going to try and go get it. Pete, like we said, overall a pretty good day for Jordan Love, but one of the um, more confounding moments was at the end of the first half when – I, the, is they seem to have trouble like just kind of even getting a two minutes offense together and at one point it was third down they were either going to run one more play and kick a field goal or or needed to spot the ball they had a timeout left had a timeout left and were just sort of lackadaisical getting to the line I think they let like 15 seconds run off the clock that's enough time for one maybe even two plays what did Matt LaFleur say about that after the game yeah it might even have been more than that now I'm trying to if I remember right 
Love takes a sack on second down, which you can't do that. Um, got to throw it away. He had plenty of time. It was a covered sack, so you throw the ball away. But then LaFleur took blame for getting the play in late because I think there were about 28, 29 seconds left when he got sacked. And there were only like four seconds left, and they had to call timeout to kick the field goal. So they let a lot of time go on. I think that was – sounds like that was on LaFleur for not getting the play in fast enough. He even said Love was a little uh, – upset with them when he when he came over the sideline he said it justifiably so that was on the coach in fact after the sack love looked kind of like he, he wasn't rushing the offense to the line i think he thought the timeout was coming yeah. and then it didn't um it, but <laughs> andres carlson proved the leg kicks a 57 yard field goal to go into halftime with a lead a lead the packers would never give up uh speaking of that let's switch over to the defensive side they've talked all all season about wanting to play a more aggressive but to be fair, Pete, last offseason we thought this Packers defense was going to be incredible. And then they came out, and, and we don't really know what was on the field, but it wasn't what we thought it was going to be. Today, though, at least it seemed they were so much more physical. And I talked to Russell Douglas in the locker room afterwards and said it, it seemed to us that this was a more physical defense. And he said we were able to just tee off today. It, I mean, how much of a difference does that make in a defensive mindset when you can just, I guess – line up and, and act like a missile straight to the guy. Well, I wonder if it helped a lot. They, they did a lot more rotating guys on, on the defensive line and the outside linebackers. Uh, all those guys played more. Preston Smith, I can't, I'm can't. i really curious to see the, the snap counts tomorrow. It seemed to me he only played, I don't know, 60% of the snaps tops. Um, you know, Last year it was probably around 80, I think. So they were rotating those guys in. So that might have contributed because then guys are fresher. Uh, the two rookies, uh, the defensive linemen drafted, yep, they uh, – they, you know, they, they didn't play a ton, but they got in there a lot more than like Wyatt played early last year, and that's two guys. So I think that probably helped make them a little more physical because guys are, are fresher in the second half of the game when they rotate like that. And then having Rashawn Gary back, God, what a difference that makes. Yeah, that's, uh, he, he looked just like he did in camp when he, he came back in those first couple practices. Like, wow, this, uh, this guy looks really explosive, and uh, he showed it today. Let's actually hear from both Kenny Clark and some other defenders as well on what it was like to go up against the Bears as a more aggressive defense today. Uh, I think I think we were, we, we were a lot more fit. We were a lot more physical. Um, you know, we our play style it really showed how we ran to the ball. Uh, you know how we flew around out there. Um, you know, even if we did, you know, take a false step or, or make a mistake, uh, you know, we, we were right on the ball. Um, and you know, that's what you want to see. And um, you know, us getting being plus two in, with the turnovers, uh, you know, that's, that's just all credit to how, how we, you know, we came out and we worked, how we get into the ball, um, you know, what coaches is preaching, the coaches are preaching to us about getting our hand on the ball, uh, you know, picking the ball off. We work on it every day, so it was cool to see. We coming down, we hitting, we flying around, we trying to get into deflections, interceptions, turnovers, all of that. This is a whole different style of football than we played last year. Pete, we don't get to go home just yet. We'll go to Atlanta next weekend. They'll take on the Falcons. I believe the Falcons won today. I'm trying to remember. These 325 games make it a little bit harder to keep up with all the other games going on. Uh, but they will face the Falcons in Atlanta next week. Falcons, a young team as well. If, if you're the Packers, what is the one step forward you just continue to take after this performance? Well, we do get to go home. Um, because we're not going straight to Atlanta. But, yes, I get I get your place. The, the home opener isn't Semantics. For, it is for a couple of weeks. Um, it's this league. That's, you know, one of the huge takeaways, like, if I would just, you know, observe in this league for as long as we have. I mean, this is a really nice win, a great way to start the season. It's the first game. Weird stuff happens the first two or three weeks. Um, teams, a lot of teams are a lot different in November and December than they are in September and early October. Um, so this this guarantees nothing for the rest of the season. They got to put it to to bed. And as long as the if this young quarterback can take care of the ball like he did today, you know they're going to be in games. They're going to have a chance to win a lot of games. I think their defense looked pretty solid, and they have a really good player in number 33. And in Romeo Dobbs as well, who made a couple incredible catches today. To your point about Aaron Jones, I think he either scored or was directly involved in the drive that scored the Packers' first three touchdowns. So uh, I think there's something to be said for that. You put the ball in his hands, good things happen. He did leave the game with a hamstring. We saw him on the sidelines getting worked on. He didn't come back in as far as I can remember, correct? 
did not come back in. So something to monitor. Of course, Christian Watson missed today with a hamstring as well. Romeo Dobbs was able to play. What a difference he made with those two touchdowns. But something we'll continue to monitor through the week with both Christian Watson and Aaron Jones and then Quay Walker as well, who left the game with a concussion. We didn't even talk about Quay Walker's pick six, um, but left the game with a concussion because he got just rocked in celebration after getting into the end zone. So all things we will keep an eye on this week before heading down to Atlanta. Uh, just one last thing, Pete, you said, you know, what do they do next? Teams look different in November. When Rasul Douglas came off the field through the tunnel, he, you know, he had that weird math problem earlier this week where he said Brett Favre was here 30 years, Aaron Rodgers was here 30 years, that's 60 years. He came off the field, he saw us, he said we about to have 30 more years. <laughs> so uh, like you said though, just week one, we'll see where they go from here. At least for now, they'll go to Atlanta. Make sure you follow up on PackersNews.com for full wrap-up coverage of the Packers win over the Bears in week one. Pete, thanks so much as always. This is Cassidy Hill and Pete Doherty for PackerNews.com.